everyone. Hold Welcome on, back. hold on, hold on. We're still preparing to go live. <laughs> Sorry. I saw the live and I was like, let's get it. <laughs> the red light. Instinct. I know. <laughs> All right, you got this, Lexi. Let's go. Let's get it, Brandon. Back at it. Virtual fist pump. And we are going live. We are live in five, four, three, two, one, go. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Zoom Room. I'm your host today, Lexi Benetti, alongside Brandon Schaff. Brandon, how are you doing today? Lexi, doing fine. It is another morning in the Zoom Room. It is exactly where I want to be. Right, except both of us being from Chicago suburbs woke up to snow today in the middle of April. So that is you know, definitely not what we want right now. It's, it's a little confusing. I, I really don't understand why we can't. We had, I think, last week, like literally one week ago, it was 70 degrees, almost 70 degrees was sunny. Oh, yeah. And now we've got this. And that is, if that's not the Midwest in a nutshell, I don't know what is. <laughs> yeah, it's absolutely crazy. And, and today's show will be a little bit crazy. We haven't mm -hmm. known as this or that. You may have seen a few of these on Twitter and Instagram, but we're going to take a few controversial topics, toss them over to our panelists, and then they will decide this or that. So it's pretty simple, but you might get a little bit steamy. Um, so <laughs> we'll give each, uh, each panelist an opportunity to answer the question, debate it a little, and then we'll keep moving forward from there. But we're going to start off today with a little bit of a fun question, not so much sports focus, but I want to know from my Bloomington friends, Kilroy's versus KOK. So we're going to, Kilroy Sports, excuse me, versus KOK. So we're going to toss it over to Jordan for, first. Jordan, what is better, sports or KOK? <laughs> All right. Can you get, wait, okay, now you guys can see. There he is. <laughs> All right, so I, I got to be honest. I am not uh, 21, uh, so I'm going to stay in the line. So I'm just going to say what I've heard from people. <laughs> is, Disclaimer. Uh, you said sports or KOK? Yep. Uh, I've heard sports is pretty fun. Uh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna throw it out there. Uh, I'm not saying that I've uh, been or not, but it's I've heard it's a fun time. <laughs> <laughs> Amongst your senior friends, have most of them said sports over Roy's? So sports seems to be like the Thursday night move, you know, where people were like, oh, it's the end of the week, uh, and you know, you just want to party or celebrate. You got the jungle; it's a nice element. Uh, mm -hmm. KOK seems more like the bar experience. Uh, the lines both get pretty outrageous, it seems, especially when the weather is nice. Uh, mm -hmm. KOK has got the patio outside, which is pretty cool. Um, I don't know. I, I think I'm per se, I'm going to go with sports from what I've heard and just the, uh, the layout I've heard it's, it's incredible. So, uh, I'll stay in, I'll stay in my lines, uh, in the boundaries here and I'll go with that. <laughs> <laughs> all right awesome let's hear from Maya what do you think sports or KOK well first of all Jordan it seems like you know a lot about both of those for not being 20 no I'm <laughs> it's a little I, sketchy I'm not a lot sources a little suspicious yes <laughs> that's a really good question I think it really depends on your mood so if it's say game day obviously you're probably going to go to Roy's hang out on the patio, get an overpriced drink and see like every single person who goes to IU. Personally, I would rather go to sports because of the jungle. I feel like it's the one place, the one bar in Bloomington where everyone is dancing, like in the jungle area. Like most bars in Bloomington, it seems like not a lot of people dance. And that's something that I'm very into. Like I like to dance when I go to bars. So for that reason, I would definitely say sports. And also sports is huge. There's so many different rooms. There's always live music. It's just always a good time. And I've honestly have never had a bad time at sports. Whereas Kilroy's, I had, I've had a few times where I go and it's so packed, you can't even move or, you know, you can't even like hear your friends. Have you seen that episode of How I Met Your Mother? I don't know if you guys watch that show, but there's an episode of How I Met Your Mother. I actually watched it like two days ago where they're at a nightclub and it's so loud that you can't even hear each other talking. So they're like trying to talk, but they're just saying nonsense because they're not actually like hearing yeah. each other. So yeah. That's kind of how I feel at Roy's sometimes on a busy night when you're inside. It's just like you can't really hear each other. You have to yell. I guess you could say the same about sports. sports. Yeah. But just because of the jungle and it's a great place to just let loose and dance, I'm going to go with sports. Have you ever been, because the jungle is open on Thursday and Saturday, mm 
-hmm. Have you ever been on Thursday and Saturday in the same week? In the same jungle? I honestly don't think so because I just turned 21 last August and I feel like I didn't go out a ton this year just because I was just busy with other things. So it was kind of rare for me to even go out like once a week. So I was never really into going out more than that. But I feel like, I don't know, have you, like, is that too much jungle? I would, I would not recommend it. I've (laughs) I've done it multiple times, but basically there's like, like, you know how there's like that map of like, if you were to do like the epic road trip and go to like all the places in the U S if you were to do that for like the bars in Bloomington, like I would always do at least like the ones that, you know, depending on like the day and when they're most popular, like if it's like a Thursday, like I, I would always like start at KOK and then go to brothers and then go to sports. And that would be like at at least those three, but honestly, we'd probably go to upstairs too. So we'd probably go like KOK (laughs) upstairs then brothers, then sports. And I did that every Thursday, a bar crawl. (laughs) Right. So I did like a bar crawl, like every Thursday, but then we would go on Saturday again. And so I would, (laughs) so you, you take Friday off, but then Saturday, it's just too much junior year. This was junior year. This wasn't even senior year. I was like, I just turned 21 and I was so excited. I was just like, let's go. Brandon, I'm with you. We would go on Thursdays too start at Roy's, then go to Brothers, and then sports, but you lose me on Saturday. I am down for the count one day a week only. Yeah. But... <laughs> All, right, All right, Kendall, what do you think? Roy's or sports? Um, I would definitely have to say Roy. Oh, can you all see me? Not yet. Give me one second. There uh, she is. What's up, Kendall? Definitely Roy's for me. I've literally only been to sports once, and I went – Found out I had pneumonia not too long after that. Oh, no. I thought it was a really bad hangover. But I don't know. Roy's for me, um, it's just uh, like, you know, I don't know. It's a more traditional experience. I'll say definitely that like Black IU goes to Roy's more than sports. There's more to do there. So whenever people head out that way, that's when I go. Outside of that, you can go to Roy's during the daytime, sit at the bar, you know, have a drink, get some nice food. Mm-hmm. Roy's the is food definitely is a food. huge it's difference. A huge difference. Here. You know, you could go to the bar during, you know, right down the street from the media school, go yep. to the street, <laughs> do the homework. It's a different experience. I like that a lot. So I'll definitely yeah. say Roy's over sports. Kendall, between right. you and me, I've been to Roy's in between classes before. And Definitely, definitely. Get a <laughs> I mean, it's right there. And there not? may have it's... been alcoholic beverages involved, but that's that's besides the point. You know, but we're, we're, you know, we just go for the, you know the nice little experience. Exactly. We don't have to it's a nice it's day fun. out. You gotta have a nice. You know, lunch. Know, just have a beer or two. Or five. that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Where did, did they do? Did they do T-shirt giveaways at both locations or just? Uh, no, it's just Roy's. Just, just Roy's. Roy's. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. The T-shirts are a nice touch for Roy's. All right, Juliet, are you going to tie it up or are you going to go with them on sports? Uh, oh, wait, do I have to turn on this, the video? Do I do that? Yeah. <laughs> there okay. she is. Oh, okay. What's there up? I am. Hello. Um, yeah, I'm going to tie it up. I'm a big Roy's fan. So I just turned 21. So I, um, like over Christmas break, I say just turned. Um, so like, you know, second semester, I, you know, had to do like, you know, the bar experience, I guess. And, um, I don't know. To me, I was really overwhelmed <laughs> at sports. <laughs> Every time I went, it was like just like really dark and like I don't know. It was just like a big club, and it I don't know. It like overwhelmed me, and I felt like at sports, you know, at least it was light, and you know, you also see every person you know on IU's campus at, at any given time at Roy's. So I mean, I'm a fan. You know, Juliet, I was just gonna say like. You see a lot of people that you know at both places, but for some reason, every time that I go to sports, it's like I saw all the people who I saw at Roy's, but then I see like two times as much because it's like all the people that didn't go to Roy's and just want to go to like the jungle or just went to sports. So it's mm-hmm. like you walk in and I feel like I'm at like a like a college reunion already. Yes. <laughs> I, yeah, I, seriously... I remember I walked in, I saw like everyone from like my freshman year floor and I right. was like, whoa. Who are you people? It messes but, you with know. your mind. Yeah. Um, 
I don't know. I just like the environment. Unless it's a concert. If it's a concert, catch me at sports. I saw Smoke Perp there. That was really fun. Um, And then I saw like a like a couple like EDM shows and um, like a country concert. That was fun too. You said Kilroy's was the winner though, right? Oh yeah, one hundred percent. I just like the atmosphere, and plus the breadsticks. It's a tie then. So we need we need a tiebreaker because it's (laughs) two and two. I guess. Is there a cover in both? You have to pay cover. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The only place you get it a free in Bloomington is upstairs. And upstairs is all reliable, baby. <laughs> you can watch Bachelor like Monday night at Brothers, and I think that's free. Yeah, I that's mean, true. You got to buy a drink. But, like, you know, yeah. Guys, what if all we right. bring our producer, Michael Tilka, to be the tiebreaker to determine? Definitely. Yeah, Tilka, totally real, real, real quick before yeah. we move on, we need a vote. All right, all right. So the <laughs> we're down between uh, KOK and sports with this with this whole thing. And if, if I get to be the producer tiebreaker on, I think I'm gonna go with KOK on this one because I think Kendall Ooh. brought it up. It offers more versatility. I actually worked at, at KOK and when it was still recess for about eight weeks, uh, it was a horrible, horrible experience. And I and that, that's why I'm not really a big fan of uh, the KOK or the Kilroy's brand. But if I had to pick one. I think the versatility that KOK offers, getting to sit out on the patio uh, as a nice little lunch or a little bit of a change of pace, and then you still have that option late at night where sports has, has very little versatility. And I feel like I only work up the courage to go to, to sports, you know, like maybe once a month uh, because of how dark and, and tight and congested that place gets. And, I, and I'm with Maya, though. I do love to dance. I love to get my groove on. But man, that place is just a little too claustrophobic sometimes. Just a little bit. So intimidating. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that determines it. Kilroy is the winner of our first question. So we're ready to move on. Now we're going on to quarantine activities. Which one is better? Which one would you pick? So Jordan, we'll start with you again. This time we're picking between Netflix and TikTok. What is your favorite oh, guilty pleasure? All right. So I got to be honest here. I promised myself, this is before pre-quarantine. Uh, <laughs> it was so cringy. I was like, I'm not going to cave. I'm not going to do it. Yep. Then sports went away. And I'm like, well, okay, well, that was oh, my no. form of entertainment. What am I going to do? <laughs> so I was like, all right, fine. I'll get TikTok, see how it is. And they have some algorithm where all my TikToks are like, I don't know, frat boys be like, or like college. <laughs> Uh, you know, kind of funny, you know, kind of related to quarantine, Corona, yep. you, you name it. I'm like, all right, they're okay. They're not as bad as I thought. Um, I don't know. Tick, TikToks are, are not as bad as I thought they were going to be going into it. Uh, so I'll vote. Uh, well, I mean, I have watched Netflix. Like Tiger King was pretty good. I know. Ooh, I think funny. Maya's seen it. Maybe a few others. Um, I've been, but I've been more of an HBO person as far as this during this quarantine for watching their content. Uh, but I'm going to go TikTok here. Wait, All Jordan, right. you think Carol Baskin fed her oh, husband oh, the tigers? She, she, yeah, <laughs> she fed him to the tigers. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually, I was really surprised that TikTok took off in the way it did because I remember I was on Snapchat one day and I was like going through like all those like news things that they have like on that one page and tiktok came up as like an ad and i was like that is the most ridiculous looking thing i've ever seen there's no way advertising it looked like a like a spam like like something that someone had like created in their basement and they were just like trying to like get you to use it and then all of a sudden here we are it's I remember that ad. It was like scary. It was like a guy dressed up like a cat or something. <laughs> right. It was weird. Yeah. It was it's, terrifying. And now it's like everyone it has a TikTok. Yeah. I'd be like, <laughs> click, click, click. <laughs> <laughs> the new Vine replacement, I guess. All right, Maya, you are up next. What do you got? Netflix or TikTok? I would definitely say Netflix because I don't have a TikTok yet. And that is because I was such a huge Vine fan. Like I lived for Vine. I would make my own Vines. I was not Vine famous, but I'd get like, well, probably I don't, only know, 20 views or something like that. But oh, yeah. at the time when I was a freshman in high school, I was like, ooh, look at my 20 views. Um, so I loved Vine so much. So then when something came and replaced it, I got a little like angry. I was like, you can't just come in and steal Vine's you know, thing. But so I haven't got a TikTok yet, but my friends sometimes send me TikToks. And I will say they're funny, but I just have never been a, like really into binge watching shows because before quarantine, I would 
you know, watch sports or I'd watch the same two shows that I watch every day, How I Met Your Mother and Friends. So now that I have more time, I started diving more deep into Netflix and watching all these really good series. And I've started binge watching things and it's actually very fun. Like I, I'm watching All American right now and wow, it's really good. I mean, it's a little more um, kind of like teenage drama-y than I was expecting. Have you guys seen All American? Mm -mm. Not yet. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, it's good. It's about Spencer. I'm trying to think of his name. It's based on a true story. It's about um, this football player who I know he won a Super Bowl in 2012 with the Giants. I can't think of his last name, but he's basically, well, you'll have to watch it. <laughs> yeah. I will say though, I did see this tweet the other day that said people who haven't downloaded TikTok yet are acting like they have a PhD in maturity. <laughs> and, <laughs> oh my gosh. I feel offended. Like I don't feel that way. So maybe I should. Yeah. TikTok. I uh, can see doing some of the dances, Maya. Not gonna lie. I know. I have actually been doing some dances and then putting them on my Snapchat story, and people are like, dude, you see the TikTok. And I was like, I just can't. It doesn't feel right. But I, I probably will give it like a day or two, and I'll probably have <laughs> All right. So that is. So did you pick TikTok? Oh, no. I'm going. Oh, with no. You don't have TikTok. Okay. So Netflix. Netflix. Right. All right. So now we're at one and one. So Kendall, here we go. You're up. I'm with Maya. It's definitely Netflix. TikTok is asinine to me. I <laughs> honestly, I'm not going to say everything on there is ridiculous. I definitely participated in the don't rush challenge. It was a great way to, you know, kind of just be like, all right, snap out of it, Kindle, you know, put some clothes on, get some makeup on, get cute. You know, that was fun. I got to do that with some of my sorority sisters. But outside of that, I downloaded the app for that reason, deleted it immediately after. The, the good TikToks, I find them on Twitter. And, you know, I'll watch them there. Some of them, like, are out of pocket. Like, the like no offense to anybody, but, like, people born in, like, I'll say 99, 2000, 2001, they're weird. It's not <laughs> different. That's like, awesome. they're into some gory stuff. And I'm just like, mm, yeah, okay. <laughs> but, like, with Netflix, you that. know, I've been still binging like Parks and Rec, The Office, because I just, I still can't find it within myself to start a new show. I'm not emotionally ready to catch back up on Grey's. But, you know, Netflix, oh. all reliable. If I feel like switching it up, some of the shows that used to be on Netflix, like Bob's Burgers and Family Guy, go to Hulu. So we're still streaming. <laughs> but definitely, like, you know, Tiger King, once I, you know, decided to watch it, you know, I stand a problematic king and I stand Joe Exotic. I'm, you know, I'm willing to, you know, go to bat for that one. <laughs> you know, one thing's interesting here. One thing you have to pay for Netflix is subscription is free. I mean, That's a good I don't know if price really right. matters. Hey, Jordan, you get what you pay for. TikTok is free for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> Put it in it seems like we know where you stand. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. All right, well, so, so far, two Netflix, one TikTok, but that's good. We got some TikTok representation so far. So that I'm, was... I'm not proud of it, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Juliet, it's up to you. Are you going to tie things up or is this going to be unanim almost unanimous? Okay, no, I feel bad. I feel bad. I'm definitely going to tie it up. I can confident oh. confidently tell you that I know the Renegade Dance. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's not my proudest thing, but I do know it, and I know that I'm a savage dance. I was just about to ask. Oh, I did that one too. I did that one too. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> um, well, that means you have to bring Tilka back in then. I know. I'm sorry. Tiebreaker. I'm sorry. <laughs> Tilka, welcome back. You are the tiebreaker. This might happen every single round, so you better be ready. Oh boy, I was not expecting myself to be on here this month, but if I got to be the tiebreaker once again, I'm going with Netflix on this one. I feel like I found a lot of really good and interesting shows. Uh, I also do not have a TikTok. Uh, if a TikTok is any good, I end up seeing it on Twitter anyway. So yeah, that's how I get more my with that. And I also know that if I were to download TikTok, that I would spend more time than I cared to admit on it. So this is an anti-TikTok uh, Zoom right now. So Absolutely. I'm going with Netflix. Give it the dub. Awesome. Thanks for breaking that tie. But now we're going to move on to college hoops versus NBA. Make it a little bit more controversial. So we're going to start again with Jordan. Jordan? College hoops or NBA? Hmm, it's a good question. Um, uh, well, my team in the NBA is is the Cleveland Cavaliers. I'm a Cleveland sports fan, and they've been bad for a couple years now. But it seems to be that way every time LeBron leaves. Um, college hoops, on the other hand, I grow. I I 
I've grown up. I still live in Louisville. It's a college town. I've grown up. I went to games at Freedom Hall where uh, Louisville Cardinals played. Then they moved to the KFC Yum Center. Um, and I, I, you know, my dad has season tickets. We still go. Um, so I don't know. I think I'm more actively. It's like, what do I find more interesting? Probably college hoops. I tend to watch them more, um, especially now at IU. I, I mean, college hoops is such a big deal here, even though the team itself has <laughs> a great product all the time. But I think college hoops, the energy, uh, the fan base, and the rooting interest, especially in March, even though we didn't have it this year, uh, still, I think, uh, over trumps anything that uh, the NBA can really do, aside from maybe playoff atmosphere. But, you know, the col- at least the college regular season is, you know, has more interest, I think. So, yeah. College Seems hoops. like they're playing for more, right? Seems college like. Kids, yeah. yeah. And they're not being paid, you know? It's like they have mm-hmm. they're more on the line, it seems. You know, they have nothing to lose. All right, Maya, what are you thinking? I agree with you, Jordan. I would definitely say college hoops because my NBA team is the Pistons. Mm. So I haven't really been very happy watching them since um, 2004. (laughs) So I also love college basketball because it seems like, I mean, obviously the schedule is a lot shorter, but it seems like each game, every player is putting in so much effort. And it's always more of a team game, I think. When I watch NBA, there's the superstars who go off and they don't say like, oh, the Lakers beat the Pistons. They'll be like, oh, well, LeBron dropped 40 points to beat the Pistons. It's more of like an individual game, it seems like. And I would also say, going off what you said, Jordan, comparing like NBA playoffs to the NCAA tournament, it seems like when it comes to the NBA playoffs, you usually know which team is going to win. It's, for the most part, pretty predictable. Where March Madness, it's called March Madness for a reason. There's, you just never know. There's upsets left and right. And it's not always, I mean, yes, a lot of the times the top three seed will win, but not always. So I just enjoy watching college basketball better. Also, it's cool because everyone's kind of around the same age, which I guess that's not that big of a difference. But sometimes it's not really as exciting to watch someone who's been in the NBA for, you know, like 13 years play against a rookie. I mean, that is kind of its own little piece of excitement. But to me, it just is more fair to watch kids the same age playing against each other that's that's not my best point so let's just nix that part but college basketball <laughs> <laughs> all right so we got two college basketball we're going to go to Kendall next Kendall are you going to stick with the crowd or are you going to move forward I gotta be different as I had you know I love the NBA I love professional sports like I'm not going to lie it took me the longest to like truly I still don't really understand college football to this day so college sports for me are just kind of like not it's just it's different it's definitely more amateur I have come to appreciate college sports especially being here at IU however it's just something about the NBA to me that will never change like there's always that excitement to me there's always that glitz the glamour of the NBA that you know happens to come with it there's more of an entertainment factor which I like a lot but coming from like a sports side of it and caring for the game I will give it to like Maya's point you are watching more equal competition I'm not watching LeBron play against you know somebody's um what am I trying to say I don't you know what I'm trying to say like somebody's (laughs) rookie you know a rookie second round pick he's been on the bench but now he's in the game type of thing so it's definitely that when it comes to like the actual sport and playing aspect but it's the NBA for me I do love however March Madness is giving me a lot of anxiety in the past and I kind of like live and thrive off of that anxiety lost (laughs) you know a couple dollars here and there but you know it's okay (laughs) okay we've all done it but um definitely the NBA for me I have and it's more of a athlete thing with the NBA whereas when it comes to college sports for me I appreciate programs like I appreciate Coach K I appreciate oh my gosh I'm drawing a blank and I oh Mike Bray at Notre Dame like I appreciate the programs that these coaches have and that's the difference between professional sports to me and college sports is more so with college sports, you're looking at the coach, looking at the program, looking at what the program is accomplishing. But professional sports, it's like, no, I'm a LeBron fan. LeBron's in LA. I'm in LA. I'm a D Rose fan. LeBron, uh, Derek is in. Oh crap, where is he now? Detroit. Detroit. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what I thought, yep. but I was just like, <laughs> I feel like he's moved around Derek so many Detroit. times. Yeah. I'm not with Detroit. Up. I'm with Derek, but you know, I support Derek in Detroit. But I, yeah. I, I, no, I'm still Chicago yeah. fan at heart. Yeah, Kendall, <laughs> right, I'm with so you. We're sitting. Oh, go ahead, Brandon. No, I was gonna say I'm with you. It's the uh, superstar effect in the NBA. Absolutely. You know? Yeah, that's kind of that's the name of the game in the NBA. Is it's all about the star players. It's what drives all of the excitement. And you don't have to even be a fan of a team. You know, like I. I guess you can kind of get that in college. Like if there's a really big, group, yeah. like Zion Williamson, like if you like Zion, you could root for Duke, you know, exactly. but like, you know, he wound up being, he's a superstar in the NBA now. So now you can mm -hmm. root for the Pelicans. So I do, know, I do think it's worth mentioning the NBA of all the professional leagues. I think it's the most well run has the most personality, yeah. you know, the most interesting, you know, That's even right. though I did pick college hoops, I think the NBA has the most character and it's most interesting you know, to watch because you have rosters of 12 to 13 players instead of NFL with so many where they're wearing helmets and you don't see their faces, right? I mean, yep. that is MLB, true. I mean, what a huge difference. And then like with the NBA, not to cut Juliet off, like, but I remember a couple of years ago when they implemented like miking up the, um, why can't I think of anything today? Not miking up the players, but like miking up the, um, are you talking about players only thing? No, it's like during the game where you could just hear what the players were saying. Like, I'll never forget watching um, Carmelo was playing. See, I don't even remember what team he was playing for at the time. And we were just able to hear what he was saying on the court. Like, the NBA is definitely much more innovative than I'll say. Well, I mean, they still might have players in the NFL. But, you know, the NFL just has a lot going on over there as a league that, you know, can't really mesh with sometimes. But, you know, that's the politic aspect of sports. Also, right, another and right now, team. oh, go ahead, Maya. <laughs> oh, sorry to interrupt. Um, is there's not really super teams in college basketball. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the NBA, personally, I think super teams have kind of ruined the excitement. Like the fact that we saw the Cavs and the Warriors in the playoffs three years in a row, it's just like, okay, come on. Can we, can we see some other teams, you know? That is true. Yeah. Right, so you guys make a lot of valid points. We have two college, one NBA. Juliet, are you going to tie it up or are we going to stick with the two um, I'm not in college. Uh, and um, I no think that's because, breaker. yes, I'm sorry, no tiebreaker. Sorry, Michael. Um, <laughs> and I think that's just because of like where you grow up. I think a lot of like NBA teams is very like, you know, if you live near more of an NBA team, you're more likely to, mm -hmm. you know, watch more of those games. Um, I grew up in the middle of, you know, the UK UofL rivalry. And I know, um, I think you had basically an entire Zoom show on the rivalry a couple weeks ago. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm a big college fan. All right, so college wins this round. Woo. <laughs> Good. Go figure. We're all college students. Yeah. yeah. College just won. <laughs> I guess it makes sense. All right, not bad. Um. All right, let's see. Uh, we're gonna switch it up. We're gonna go with uh, outdoor activities. Back when we were able to do these things, <laughs> and uh, we're gonna go. We're gonna start with Juliet this time. So Juliet, you're not off the hook yet. We're going in like <laughs> inverse order. We're going to go cornhole versus bags. What is the proper name of the game? Okay. I have never heard someone actually call it bags. Like I thought that was a well, joke. Guess what? You're talking to one of them. So congratulations. <laughs> no, you them. don't. And no, the other don't. host also calls it bags. So welcome. Chicago. <laughs> what? I thought no. that was a joke. Like I heard people nope. like joke about that. I was like, that's not real. Okay, so obviously I'm a cornhole person. Wow. 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 Disappointing. <laughs> Did you know there's no corn in there whatsoever? Yeah, isn't it like beans? Rip off. Yeah. So that's why yeah. I, I, I never understood where that name comes from. Well, it's because we like you use corn. The hole is like yeah. the shape of it's like the thickness of like a corn, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Like, the thickness of a corn. All right. Like all right. you know, if you think about the like that hole on the board, yeah. All right, Kendall. <laughs> Kendall, what do you got? You got to save me here, unless you, unless we're going down a cornhole rabbit hole that we can't come back from. Honestly, I'm trying to remember what I called it growing up. I didn't really play it too much. I'm, and I, I want to say we did call it. I want to almost say we called it bean bags. So I'm going to have to therefore say bags by default. I only yeah. think we called it cornhole. I just think I knew it was called like cornhole but i think we called it bag so i'll go with that I, I got a wild card for you when when i was growing up i thought it was called bag o like with an o so yeah. i that is <laughs> just not that is just bag not o. right like that. close 
but I th- that's what it was because I didn't know what the official name was. So I'd just be like, oh, let's go play Bago. And they'd be like, Bago. what is that? <laughs> that's awesome. Okay, there we go. So that's a tie so far. Maya, what do we got? I have honestly never heard anyone say bags until I got to IU. I'm from Michigan, <laughs> so I don't know if it's like a Michigan thing, but we call it cornhole. And it's actually a pretty big deal up here. Like at every single graduation party, you have to have cornhole or like, what are you doing? You know? Yeah, so, every barbecue, every mm-hmm. party. Yeah. Yep. So when I got to Indiana and they're like, oh, let's play bags. I was like, what does that even mean? Are we just going to grab some bags and just like, what? You know? So I had to have someone explain to me like, no, that's that game that you, I was like, oh, that's cornhole. And they're like, no, it's bags. And I was like, no, it's cornhole. I don't know <laughs> if they will ever actually like, come to a conclusion because it really depends on where you're from, you know? Mm-hmm. That's how it is. It's like soda and pop. Uh, Some people say soda pop. That's weird. That's a good one. Okay, Jordan, wait. In Louisville, don't people say just Coke? I because that's all I hear. Just Coke. Even if it's a Pepsi, you call it Coke. Like it's all. It's a Southern thing. Yeah. I don't don't know. I mean, that's what people say, like in New Albany, at least. But I'm just glad in the South you don't. When you get when you ask for iced tea, they give it to you sweet. I can't do oh, that. Yeah. Nice mm-hmm. But I don't know. That's another debate. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I'm going to go similar. Uh, you know, I didn't hear this bags term until I came to you as well. Mm. And when you look at all the rec sports they have, I don't know if you guys have been to like the SRC and have seen when they promote it, but it says bags tournament. Like they call Oh, it yay. I thought you were going to um, say cornhole and I was about to be so sad. No. And I'm like, I mean, personally, I, I've always known it as cornhole. So that's where my vote stands. But it, you, I mean, there's obviously enough people out there that think bags is a legitimate term for this game. So I, it's not like outrageous, but I, I'm growing up. It's always been cornhole. So. Oh, okay. All right. And Tilka just said that they call it bags in Iowa. So <laughs> wild. It, yes. If that, if that has any, uh, any validity here, then it, it looks like bags is kind of running away with it here. I don't know. Wait, what do you guys think? Oh, you both say bags. We're both bags. bags. We're yeah. both bags. We can't count our votes, though, because that just skews it yes, too much. That's so. just cheating. We're, we're, our <laughs> votes don't count today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to move forward then with some news back in Bloomington. Which hall is better, Assembly Hall or Memorial Stadium? We're going to switch it up this time and start with Maya. What do you think is better, Assembly Hall or Memorial Stadium, the atmosphere? Personally, I think nothing can compare to Assembly Hall. The atmosphere is freaking electric. Even when IU is not the best basketball team, for the most part, everyone still shows up. Like IU fans are so dedicated to basketball. And I think that's the main reason why Assembly Hall wins. Well, also the history of, there's just so much to it. But pretty much every game I've been to, men's basketball wise, it's the hall has been pretty full, which, you know, that's just, what you expect when you go to a IU basketball game. And even if the team loses, even if IU loses, I still have a great time. I just love being in assembly hall. It's just so awesome to think that like, oh my gosh, like Isaiah Thomas played here. And I don't know, so much history. And then Memorial Stadium is also awesome stadium, especially since they did the remodeling and everything. But when I do go to IU football games, it's just kind of sad to look at the crowd and it'd be half empty. It's just not the same, you know? Right. All right, Jordan, what do you think? What atmosphere is better? Which one do you like better? This or that, Assembly Hall or Memorial Stadium? So atmosphere-wise, uh, you know, I think, especially this past year, there were a lot of issues with attendance at, at games for really, you know, football, maybe even once they started winning and people still weren't showing up. And a lot of it was, there just wasn't a lot of great Saturdays in the fall in Bloomington where the weather was great and they had a home game. You know, and they played a team that was competitive with them. I mean, a lot of home games for IU football seem to either blow out, blow them out, like they play a Georgia Southern or something at the beginning of the season. It's not close. Or they play like an Ohio State uh, or, you know, maybe a Penn State, and it's, it's close for a little bit, and then they pull away. You know, so a four-quarter game, kind of hard to get that from IU football at home, it seems recently. But I think IU basketball, as far as the atmosphere goes, Attendance has also been sort of an issue. I mean, I know there was a couple of games I sat in GA this year and it was maybe a couple of minutes to tip off. And I'm like, you know, it's still a lot of empty seats. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think 
for the tradition's sake and since assembly hall is a closed arena right so everything's more kind of closed off it seems more you know energetic and filled when everyone's in there or it just seems maybe because the sound carries better um so i don't know assembly hall you also got to go with the tradition right and just kind of everything poured into that arena so i'm going to go assembly hall here awesome now kendall we have two assembly hall are you going to agree with them or are you going moving forward we're going to make it three oh definitely assembly hall um i don't know it's just like like maya was saying it's definitely the historic aspect of it for me like i love history i love it like my first time walking into assembly hall is still it kind of like takes your breath it took my breath away i'll say and it's definitely like a surreal atmosphere, especially like if you love sports history, you can't deny the everything that's happened there, everything that's gone on in Assembly Hall. There, I have been fortunate enough to be around for some good moments uh, during Assembly Hall during my, well, I'm a transfer student, so my three years at IU, well, two and a half, but you know, neither here nor there. <laughs> um, it's definitely like just a lot of good emotions that come out of Assembly, no matter how the team's doing. Um, but with like Memorial Stadium, like Jordan was saying, no matter what, you could kind of find like after halftime, it kind of the stadium definitely empties out no matter how the game is going. I definitely appreciate Memorial Stadium, the, you know, fields for, you know, tailgating and stuff. That was, you know, what I'll appreciate Memorial Stadium for. But I mean, like it's still it's still a nice infrastructure. It's not as big as some other uh, collegiate football um, stadiums definitely so that does play a factor in it to me because it doesn't look as like official I'll say but there's not a need for it to be super big because there isn't as much of a demand for IU football as it is for IU basketball and then like with women's games assembly hall definitely brings the energy so assembly for me awesome yeah this is Indiana this is assembly hall has such rich history that you guys have been talking about now, Juliet, are you going to go with them or are you straying away from this Assembly Hall winner? Oh, no. I I mean, like, I have to agree. Assembly Hall, like, I think that was definitely, Four, you know, oh. a huge factor <laughs> in me coming to IU. Like, that was definitely my favorite part. Had you been to a lot of IU games before you were a student? I got into, I think, probably like, probably like five or six. Nothing, like, insane, but, I mean... It's like an Indiana thing. Like, you know, you're going to go see the Hoosiers play, you know? <clears throat> oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's basketball in Indiana. It's synonymous. But Brandon, let's stick with some basketball now. <laughs> I know. that That's what I was thinking. And real quick, just on that point, too, like a memorial, I mean, Assembly Hall is iconic. And obviously, I'm never going to pick Memorial Stadium over it. But there was that Ohio State game at Memorial Stadium. If you guys remember that, if you went to that. That was one of the most fun college football games that I've ever been to. So that one will always stick out. And that's like the one example where I remember it was very hard for any basketball game that season to really get to that level of excitement. But yeah, other than that, that's just You're talking about the Thursday night game and back in 2017. That's what I'm talking about. Yep. Yes. That was my very first, uh, you know, IU game. I, mean, I was a freshman. I was like, wow, every game is this like this? <laughs> you spo you're spoiled. Jordan. Yes. It's not oh my like gosh. That. I remember that. Yes. Yeah, that was like our very first year here. It was crazy. Oh. I was like, oh my God, this is IU. Like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not. But, you know. All right. Well, sticking with the topic of basketball, but we're going to switch to the NBA now. And this is the big question the question of big all, controversial one <laughs> all decades here. Kendall, we're going to start with you. You are our NBA insider here. Michael Jordan or LeBron James? It's 2020. <laughs> We're in a we're in a completely different era. We're just gonna throw out, you know, forget the different eras and everything. Just from basketball player to basketball player, who is better? I'll say this: the fact that Michael Jordan's name still being brought up, even though his like you know legacy, not even though he stopped playing in the early two thousands. Let me say that, but his legacy, you know, stays at the eighties, nineties. The fact that he's still being brought up today in twenty twenty. I mean, need we say more? I have a love-hate relationship with LeBron. It's more on the love side nowadays now that I'm able to, you know, put my fandom aside, you know, let, let some th certain things go from my childhood. LeBron is definitely easily, I'll say, the greatest player today. It took me a long time to admit that. I wanted to say Kobe was better than LeBron. They both bought something different to the table. But I'm still going with Michael. Michael's the blueprint. You have people like Zion Williamson, um, 
oh my gosh, what's his name? In Atlanta, his name's like Trey, Trey Young. Young. Yes, yeah. thank you, Trey Young. I cannot think of anything today. People are still <laughs> citing Michael Jordan, even though they've never seen him like for real play. They've probably watched highlights. They've probably watched, you know, documentaries, whatever. However, they've never seen him play live though. And people are still saying, yeah, Michael Jordan is one of the reasons why I played it at. And it's like, okay. But yeah, you get to play on the court with LeBron, which is great. But I'm going with Michael, you know, Chicago, always, period. It's Michael for me. All right. So we got one for Michael. Ju- uh, Maya, Maya, what do you think? I agree, Kendall. Definitely Michael Jordan. I have never been the biggest LeBron fan. I feel like he's a great player. And like you said, he is probably the best player of that we've got to witness. And it also took me a long time to admit that. But I actually, when I lived in LA last year, I cannot stand LeBron James because that was when the Lakers obviously weren't very good. They didn't have AD yet. And <laughs> I just remember LeBron had no energy. I thought he was a horrible leader. I remember sometimes if you'd miss a basket, instead of hustling back to defense, he would stay on that side of the court. And I was like, dude, you're supposed to be leading this team. Like you're supposed to be the best player in the league right now. Like, what are you doing? So that's a good point that we actually have never seen Michael Jordan play live. So it's kind of interesting that, I mean, I still think that, but I will say I'm going to throw in some Detroit ties right now. Michael Jordan would not be the player he is known for today if it wasn't for the Detroit Pistons, <laughs> because oh. before um, I want to say it was like the 88 season when the Pistons beat the Bulls in mm-hmm. the Eastern Conference Finals, they just destroyed Michael Jordan. They had this plan called the Jordan Rules where they just were not going to let him to the basket. And Michael, it like got in his head a lot. And that summer was when he started training and really getting in good shape because the year before he wasn't in the right, he wasn't physically physically able to compete against that level of toughness so then the next year he came out and that's when I think the peak of his career started was mm-hmm. as the piston yeah <laughs> bad well, boys. I, bad I know boys. they had those back-to-back championships 89 and 90 but mm-hmm. did they ever win again 2004 uh yeah but for the <laughs> next for the next 10 years it was all MJ so that, but yes, you, you do have to give him some credit there, and it does go back to the bad boy Pistons. Jordan, I saw you shaking your head earlier. It's making me think that I already know what your answer is, but <laughs> we'll see. What, what do we got? All right, so I'm going to start it off by saying, first of all, I've, you know, like you said, we've never seen him play live because we all weren't alive. Um, so it's hard for me to get behind this guy that everyone calls a goat, and it's possible. Ooh. People, I get it. If I've just never seen him, it's like all legends, you know, it's all tales. Like, you know, it's like Will Bill Chamberlain Russell hundred point game. Right. I mean, yeah. Will Chamberlain was a dominant player, but I, I don't know. It's just like in this day and age, I don't know if he could do the same. I mean, he was miles leaps and bounds ahead of everyone else. Then I mean, the, the NBA is, is different than it was in the eighties and nineties. That's another thing we have to look at here. Right. It was more grind physical, You know, defense was more important at the time that Jordan played. So there's a lot of differences. It's hard to compare two players, who's the GOAT, when we're talking about two completely different generations and styles of basketball. Um, So, you know, if you want to say Michael Jordan's the GOAT of his time, as LeBron, this is a new age, if you want to say LeBron's the GOAT of his time, that's fair. But since you're posing the question, you know, between them face-to-face, I'm going to say LeBron. Uh, for a couple reasons one and his career's not done yet he could still win a title with the Lakers I mean we don't know what's going to happen this season but say he does win with the Lakers okay that would be three teams that he's been on his career that he's won an NBA championship with you know you look at what he did in Miami where he you know he won a couple titles there kind of the first big three if you want to call I guess the the Celtics if you want to say a big three but really started a kind of a trend of uh, big threes then he goes back to Cleveland right he leaves everyone hates him burns his jersey comes back you know makes up for it delivers on his promise to win a title in 2016 after you know beating a team that won 73 games won 73 and 9 an NBA record that no other person no other team has accomplished comes back from 3-1 deficit in the finals no other team no other player has accomplished this and now he's in L.A. and he's, he's going to try to do the same thing there. 
So for me, LeBron's the GOAT. And then the last thing you look at, the most valuable player, right? What does the most valuable mean? Well, you take him off of Miami after he left. Miami wasn't the same. Cleveland especially, you can see how much they've been hit when he's not there. They're a lottery team. They, they're terrible. I mean, he, he is so important and so valuable to this team. The Bulls had some pieces, at least. You take Jordan off, they're still a playoff team probably. With Pippen, you have Rodman, you had Steve Kerr for a bit. You have other players. The Cavs, terrible. They're, they're, they weren't going anywhere without LeBron. If you uh, took, <clears throat> if so. LeBron does not come back in 2016 and comes back from the 3 um, 1 deficit, do you still think he's still at that elite level in finals history? Hmm. That's a good question. It's, it's tough to say just because he, you know, everything that LeBron's done at this point, you know, every little thing I think matters, especially in this GOAT debate, right? I mean, when you talk about Jordan and six titles, I mean, LeBron. Everyone points to how he's three and six, I believe, in the yeah. NBA finals. And he just, I mean, last year was the first year. He, he went to, I think it was eight straight finals. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's unheard of. That's, that's insane. So every single thing that LeBron does, you know, every title, I mean, that title, a lot of people, I think it's almost worth two titles just because you came back from a 3-1 deficit and you beat a 73-9 and nine team. There's just so much wait it's just it's such a hard debate right <laughs> i know it's like pick and choose you know it's a, it's there's great elements from both they both played in different times but obviously you ask anybody from you know before you know the ones all the veterans they're all like well jordan was the man but you know nowadays a lot of people do look up to lebron especially the younger players you know and they look up to jordan too so it's it's really just a matter of where you're from who you look up to juliet that, that brings it down to you um i'm gonna tie it up <laughs> um, oh, I feel no. bad. I feel bad. Yeah, that means Tilka's I mean, coming in for this one. I know Tilka. I'm sorry you got you're on call, man. And like literally, I think it's just because I mean none of us actually watched um, Jordan, and it's just I don't know. I feel like we sort of like idealize what you know he would have been like today, and it's just not. It's not the same today. Like Jordan said, it's two different periods. It's two different. You know, it's honestly like two different sports, um, and I just think it's yeah. not comparable. I don't know. For for Jordan and Juliet, because this is something that I hear, and of course, as a avid sports fan and a Bulls fan <laughs> and a Jordan fan, I will always pick Jordan. But I, I really do. I try to understand the other side of the argument as much as possible. For the people who say the argument is we can't say Jordan because we didn't, I, people our age did not watch him play. What is it about not seeing him live that is like the central point of the argument? Good yeah. <laughs> For Jordan and Juliet. <laughs> For you no, guys, you're for right. People, you're right. But that, it's like, what? Why is that such a? Why is that such a valid point? Because we haven't seen him. It's like saying that. Okay, if you think about it with music, it's like saying like Elvis is like the king of like all music. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. But really, it's like, well, then that's not fair because there's all these different mm -hmm. styles. So like, you know, Michael Jordan might be like the king of his style, but you know. You know, mm -hmm. I think it'd be interesting. Different. What if you switch LeBron and Michael Jordan, where LeBron plays in the '80s and Jordan plays Ooh. now? You know, how that's would, exciting. You know, you think yeah. like that. I mean, he's so dominant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I mean, there's so many generations. I think it just depends on the generation you grew up to, where you really heart and where you lie. Maybe the regions you grew up in. You know, there's so many things that weigh into this. So. And I'm curious to see what Michael has to say here. Yeah, I know. We'll find Let's out. In, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so it's uh, it's good to be back on call here, but I obviously there's so many different layers and so much depth to this entire argument, and both players, uh, especially after unfortunately losing uh, Kobe earlier this year, that both these players should be appreciated. And I'm not trying to say that uh, that everybody deserves a participation medal in this because I'm not going to do that because I'm going to pick LeBron with this one because <laughs> even though even though I was raised uh, in sort of the LeBron generation, I didn't get to see uh, Jordan play live, unfortunately. Uh, looking at sort of how their their achievements match up, and I feel as though even though the 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 argument too often gets boiled down to specifically championships, because I don't think that tells the all encompassing story of a player. I think that uh, Jordan on an on an individual scale and his isolation skills are absolutely unmatched and compared to any player in NBA history. But I feel as though LeBron can be slotted into any team and he's going to bring more value because of his ability to, to pass, his ability to score, to do all these things. I mean, we've 
legitimately seen LeBron play one through five and Jordan, all the credit he's done and the amazing things he's done as a guard. I mean, the, the versatility that LeBron has and what he's been able to do with so little of what he has. I mean, he, he took Cleveland to an NBA finals and he was 20 year, 22 years old. And the second best player on his team was Anderson Verjao, the Jurnus Ogoskis. I mean, come on. I feel as though LeBron has been able to do so much more. So I'm, I'm giving it to LeBron. Kendall's got a counterpoint. I have a quick, like just a little food for thought. I've been kind of marinating on it. <laughs> we're also kind of like, if like kind of Tiltilka's and uh, Jordan's point, if you were to swap them in generations, what we have to recognize is that Jordan was playing in a time where it wasn't just like, okay, we have a superstar leading a team. We have a big three leading a team. It was a solid roster. So like, would LeBron be able to survive and function on a solid roster? And same for Jordan, would he be able to survive? Well, I mean, yes, we know he would be able to survive as a superstar. However, uh, comma, like, you know, just being able to survive in those two different elements and like, you know, just boils down to different eras, different styles of playing the game. And honestly, yeah, I'm still, I'm still sticking with Jordan. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I will say though, the documentary coming out, I, I, just I will be say, watching the last dance. And I'm, I'm looking forward to it because I'm, you know, I feel like I just don't know enough stories about Jordan. So, you know, I'd be gonna, I hear that oh. story. You, yeah. you, uh, you, LeBron fans will learn. You will learn <laughs> after these next <laughs> ten parts. It'll be good stuff. We will convert. <laughs> yes, <laughs> love it. Well, we're gonna move on now back to Bloomington, and we're gonna start with Juliet for this question, just because we know that she is on a bike team. So, which event is better, Little Five or Quals? I love Quals, one hundred percent. It is fast. Um, I mean, the whole thing's over in three minutes, you know? Like, <laughs> it's like the derby, you know? It's like, it's crazy. And then I think, you know, also the week of Qualls is just way more fun than the week of Little Five. I think Little Five gets a little, a little sketch awesome. sometimes. <laughs> um, there's just so many people in Bloomington and it's, I don't know, it's a lot. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm on Delta Gamma's bike team, which is, you know, crazy and like, sad now because you know all their seniors are like leaving I guess but I don't know it just quals is like something that you train so hard for because it's just it's two lap sprint and then it's right. over it's just crazy like you can't beat that you know it's like so right. much energy and I don't know. so as a rider you would specifically pick quals but as a spectator would you also pick quals or would you say a little five yes I would also pick Qualls for <laughs> as a spectator because, yeah. um, I mean, the men's race can what? It, can it go up to like three hours? Oh yeah, three hours, four hours. Yeah. Um, again, Qualls is over in three minutes, and you know, I I'm a person that gets really anxious the more um, I'm into a sport, and so by you know the end of like that race, I'm like on my edge. I remember like being freaked out at um, Little Five last year. Cause like, you know, it all comes down to that last like five seconds or last, you know, 10 laps. Right. And um, Delta Gamma came in second last year, just um, <laughs> literally by like a thousand, thousands of seconds. Like it was, it was, it was, it was intense. It's intense. <laughs> it was, yeah. Oh, I know. I know. It was like, um, what was it? Was it Teeter? Teeter came or Forrest? Yeah. yeah. Teeter. Teeter, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Teeter came in at like very end and just, <sighs> Oh, house is quiet for days <laughs> all right so we got one for quals we're going to move on to kendall now what do you think is better as a spectator and as a fan i'm not gonna lie i've never watched quals i didn't know quals was a thing until maybe this year last year it's the best. I, little five for me is all about being a participant in the activities so i want to give it to little five just because i've never seen a race i'm not gonna lie um I'm with, you, like, really, hmm? I'm with you on that I i've never you. seen a race nope. wow. little five to me when it was brought up to me during orientation well not orientation uh my tour junior year it was little five is a bike race but it's a big party week okay keyword party there we are <laughs> so Real find the, race, me. Yep. <laughs> the race is so fun not as fun as quals but i'll probably watch the board and you like minutes. 
I know it's three minutes and there, there's this board and it has everybody's times on it mm-hmm. and like you're like okay so we only have to get like a minute 45 cake and you're like okay that's not cake but <laughs> it looks and I don't know it just goes by so quick I all right so we're one and it. one one and one moving forward Maya what do you think this is a tough one because my first thought was to go with little five because obviously I'm not a bike racer so for me it was kind of more of about the activities and festivities. So for little five, that's a whole week of partying and it's so fun. But then I think about quals and it it's called qualities. Like it's literally a holiday. Like when I was in a sorority back in my underclassmen days, it was the day to look forward to because we would be at our sorority house and then people would come in at like 3.45 in the morning, banging on pots and pans, being like, wake up, it's quals. And we'd get up at four and we'd start, you know, doing legal activities and <laughs> thing, you know, everything, just all wholesome stuff. Um, <laughs> but when it comes to the races it, themselves, I do like the fact, cause I've been to both. I like how quals is quicker. You're there, you watch your team and then you're like, oh, that's done. Like how fun. We're little five, it does, it, it's long. But also I never actually got to cover either. Like I never, from like a sports reporter perspective I've never gotten to cover little five or quals. And I think if I would have had that opportunity, that might have changed things for me because then it's just a whole different experience. Like you're not there just to party. You're actually like paying attention to what's going on and you're more involved, if that makes sense. Right. Right. I had the opportunity to report last year at Little Five and it's, you know, the atmosphere is just one of a kind and it's hard to put into words except once you're you're there, you know, there's just so much history behind it. So it's definitely a great experience for my junior friends to look out for next year if uh, everything goes to plan and we have a little five next year <laughs> of <laughs> Jordan. Years. So are you going to tie it up or are we going to see where we're at with little five and quals? Yeah. So it's two, one quals. Is that where it stands right now? Right. Yeah. Right. All right. So yeah, I'm going to have to tie it up again. I'm going to go little five. Uh, I, it's the pinnacle event in IU athletics. I mean, there's a reason why there's a movie that we all watched actually in class breaking away about the race. I mean, it, it's, it's an iconic sports moment. Uh, there's nothing else like it. It's unique um, in the college landscape across the country. And just the ability to pack people in, um, you know, I, I hosted a, I co-hosted a podcast this year about the little five. And I just talked to so many bikers who just, you know, they, they all told me it's just so worth it, all the training for that day to go in and see everyone there, you know, for the women on Friday, everyone's at the race supporting you on Saturday for the men, the same thing. Uh, you know, I think as a biker, that's got to feel really special. You know, as a fan, I've been twice now. Um, it's, it's a good time. I mean, I, I think it's enjoyable. I mean, typically it's a little hot. I tend to be a little dehydrated from activities beforehand, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's definitely a good time. And um, I'm going to go a little five. Well, you know what that means then? We're sitting at two and two. We tiebreaker need our Tilka. Lovely producer <laughs> for our tiebreaker. <laughs> tiebreaker Tilka. I'm a, I'm a fan of that. Uh, but yeah, of that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm going to get that trademarked once this is all said and done. But if I had to pick one, I feel as though I think Little Five's got to be it. I feel that that's the one that has such a greater appeal. I think if you were to go with Qualls, I would absolutely understand it because, you know, if you are in Greek life or you on, are on a team, you know, I feel like that is. Uh, more so your thing because that's where the, the journey really starts it's more intimate it's just instead of you in a stadium full of people it's you and all your best friends uh cheering each other on but I feel as though little five still has that super broad appeal that legitimately anybody can appreciate whether you're young old uh anything like that but uh as we're kind of wrapping up the show here throughout the throughout the show today I've been tweeting out polls to see what the the Twitterverse has said on some of these topics so I'm going to go through some of the results here our first one uh, we're playing this or that. Uh, which bar is better, KOK or sports? Uh, 22 votes came in. 64% picked KOK over sports. Oh, I'm uh, disappointed in that. Right? <laughs> that is that is just skewed. Unbelievable. <laughs> uh, better quarantine entertainment, TikTok or Netflix? Netflix, 67% of the vote wow. on that one. Uh, with 21 votes coming in on that. Uh, and then our next one, the most voted on, uh, all these polls have been left up for an hour or so. Uh, the earlier things I've tweeted out, the, the KOK and the, the Netflix 
uh, polls uh, are wrapping up in about 15, 20 minutes. If you do want to get your last input in on those, uh, better form of basketball, NCAA running away with this 78% of the vote uh, for college Ooh. basketball on that one. Uh, this one breaks my heart a little bit. Still 30 minutes left in the poll, but 28 votes coming in, 68% of people will say cornhole over bags. I, that hurts me a little bit on the inside. I'm disappointed <laughs> to hear that. Uh, the biggest uh, runaway here, better IU sports venue, Assembly Hall with 90% of the vote. Uh, no contest on that one. The tightest one we've had yet, uh, fewer votes than the ones we've seen before. Uh, but LeBron over Jordan by one vote so far, 56% uh, saying LeBron over Jordan. Mm -hmm. uh, and then this one's still very early, uh, but we have a decent number of votes and 64% say little 500. So be sure to share those uh, panelists to make sure that people are, are getting out and getting their voice heard on these crucial topics. So, Sweet. So, those are your points. <laughs> thank you, Tilka. You provided yes, the tiebreaker and all the perspective. And, uh, you know, as he mentioned, we're about to wrap this up, but I want to get one more rapid fire question in. So don't, don't take too long answering this one, but we're going to bring it to IU basketball again. All right. We're going to talk about two specific players. I want to know who you think has been more impactful so far in their IU careers. Okay. Jordan, we'll start with you. We'll go down the line. Romeo Langford or Trace Jackson Davis. Trace Jackson Davis. Uh, Romeo had the injury to the thumb. You look at that, it probably affected his season some. Trace Jackson Davis had overall more sound year and an impressive freshman campaign. Maya? That is a very good point. The thumb injury did certainly impact his season. I would still go with Romeo Langford just because not only what he did on the court, but just all the hype and excitement that he brought back to IU basketball, especially after a season that they needed someone like that to come and kind of give people a reason to cheer for the Hoosiers again. Kendall? TJD for me, it's definitely mm -hmm. one. More of a powerhouse. Like the thumb injury did, you know, have a lot to do with it. But I appreciate the fact, I don't, is he about to be, well, I don't know if anybody's going to be a one and done, but I hope he's not going to be Trace is one coming one back day. next year. Great. Then Trace for me, yeah, for sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. And Juliet, I know you know I Romeo, mean, you know so this I'm is it. <laughs> <laughs> you know who I'm going to pick. No, um, I uh, have known Romeo Langford since, like, the second grade. Um, we went to elementary and then, like, high school. Like, you know, he's from my hometown. Um, so, obviously, yeah, I mean, I have to pick my hometown homie. <laughs> all right and we're like that what can i say the, the <laughs> finer the final joke, joke. the final tiebreaker goes to tilka then tiebreaker tilka this this is such an unfair question i i feel like both these both these two guys are absolutely spectacular they're good people they they represent the program in so many ways and i i it's it's hard to to really measure how much of an impact uh, Romeo had just because or at least on the court because of that thumb injury I mean how, how many guys do you know did you just freeze I mean that's, that's such a <laughs> yeah. part but I I think I'm gonna I'm think I'm gonna go on this one because of the excitement he uh, I think it was <laughs> so, <laughs> what's going on Tilka you're freezing up on us who, who are you saying my who, who are you saying is better? You're freezing. Romeo like, right Langford. before you I'm say it. Oh. Oh. Romeo. Romeo. <laughs> I vote two votes for Romeo. Oh. I, I did not realize that I froze up right before uh, right before I got my pick oh, in. Of course. But the that excitement that Romeo sense. was, uh, yeah, but the uh, the excitement that brought to the pro, absolute Hoosier hysteria at Southern Indiana. Obviously two great players and two that have left their mark on Hoosier history, but I, I'm going with Romeo on this oh, yeah. one. I was watching the live stream of his commitment at your high school, Juliet, where he was, he was committing, Wasn't put the hats crazy? on. It was, I've never seen so much excitement other than when Zion committed to Duke. That was like, yeah. those were the two things that I was like, I've never seen two college recruits get this much excitement. I was in the middle of Wells Library on the quiet side, the east side, and I screamed out loud when he put the IU hat on and put the jumped. Hat on. and and like everybody in the whole library was like what is going on like what is this dude doing but man it was fun all right Lexi to you yes well we're gonna wrap this show up I know I had so much fun hearing all of your views and I hope you all did too Jordan Maya Kendall Juliet Michael and Brandon thank you guys so much for joining us today I know that these Twitter votes will still be going on on Michael Tilka. Go vote for those. Um, make sure you're putting your input in and 
writing any comments you have on the rest of the show. And we hope you guys had just as much fun as we did. And we'll see you next time on the Zoom Room.